please, please speak your word. Please speak your word. Please speak your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mede mandi ando rose kinga di andere borroso. Mamba na yandara kiba li andero sheke si andara. Maduba romo de ke de mole rosso di ende rebo tu marra andaya kaza. Father, please speak your word to me tonight. Eben de bri sheke ende simda ruamada. Father, speak your word unto me. Speak your word unto me, Lord. Speak your word unto me. Please speak your word unto me. Speak your word unto me. Speak your word unto me. In the name of Jesus Christ. As many as can speak in the language of the Spirit, let's speak in the language of the Spirit to commune with the Holy Spirit tonight. Merebe de Boruba Saka Shara Mayande Gelebo Rosobu Mana Yanda Rama Diakese Rege de Beseke Dindaru Mayamba de Bazakota Riandoru Rabba de Baliando Rosekese Rebanda Bodaki and Lobo Sobrum Bodokoto Modo Banda Rubayaka Sharam Baladaya Rege de Bezeketende Breke Sekato Roseke Shiba Ramadaya Banda Mana Yandoro Beke Sieda Rekede Lake Zeketende Rimanduru Mabranda Yamazakotura Yanda Lama, Maka Sharamba Yandeke, Lake Zebazum do Romono, Makamba Manariando Yokozo, Reba Bazeke Sherem and Yando Robayado Zakata, Narianda Rumayamru, Brondo Zocorodozo, Shebimaneke Rezeke Tedemo Roboto, Yikando Rianda Ramana, Mayamro Nayakajama, Narianda Rian Riando Shori and Boru, Modumanda Rabaka Zaka Sharodo, Lamba de Anda Robaka Zaba Rabadaya, Eke Sheke Zeketende Rina. Rumaya doba mambro saka randa ya majake se zibranda yeke zekele nemo robondo domo do robo zokoto shekinga roba ya kaza roba mamba da ya nuru na ya nuru randa ya kaza kaza kato ya leke mbrede yeke shebi muruto makamamba na ya nda zaka shebrede sekete ibamba da ya ramada koro shoko roboto sekende ri andoro rabamba da ya kasha kazara libandi ri andoro kabara re andoro zeke she Ize pende rianda rabako rozokoto rombolo robo roboto zekete igam rianda zaka randa yanda shaka rabada ya raba ya gazakata lakanda rabado mabada ya deke breze keshe riza kadayanda loma nama na bruba ya kazao makom dariando rozeken de lianda rakanda yamba saka saya deke eleven ebo rozoko shombo rondo yamba dayando rakata siyanda ra ivranda shekembo munu ziyanda Maka shaka zabata randu, mamranda ya kazaka tayalulu, reka sebele mene moruzo kuto, mando roshi ya kazabata rande leye, kezeke rende riandoro, manda mada baru baba jaka rabada, ebana raba ya kazako, sheke rebe debo zektiya, ramba banda maya kazaka sandoro, roba ya mozo kosho, zebende brene ya to zakata, mamba landu rayada shake burodo zeke te, le debo redo zeke bareke zeke to, Onde rianda Roma manda ya bazaka ta naka shaka ni ando mene mene mrosi ando shaya neki zato manda ramana marubanda ya masikta rada ya rayando zaki ando riam bodomoso mondo brute ya kasha bazata ramana masikundi ala na bruza ye ezeke sheli alele bo rakanda madiba roda ya ndaza mama kama dzo tayanda ke ezeke zimande ya darabato makambado ba ya ndoro koshe dorobo ruma Banda di anda ruke ne mojeke ezeke de me de ke li endo robo zaketa makamba bando rama yanta zaka uri ando ruba ya makaza ka shanda rama di ando robo kunaya beje ke seke tende ri ando robo mombo tu makoraba bati akasha na zapa ronde ezeke ezeke zende li endo rozu kto rombo no mo roma ye meke zeke shibra na yama mazaka tanda lama li ando roma kamada di ando ro re seke ezeke tende li endo robo zokoto bando Robozo octoko showroom banama di atarobaya masaka randa ya dey ke shere de mo robotu manarianda rubaya narianda rone sheke de libo sokto rondo branda ya no zakata lanam narianda roke noye meshite sheke de menebo sheke zeke de eke bedemo romana yaka shaka ramadaba mamba na rona
Sake Nayaka de Rebo Rosso Corobodo Roboto Binayaka Zako Ranayana Layando Shakara Malandica Iganda Kiana Zako Lorubo Nikande Kene Loni Odoro Mando Baru Maya Kashaka Tandali and Dada Mayaka Nakazanda Ramadi Camredo Zekete Evelable de Endo Roboso Tumana Yanduza Makana Mambra Mayam Bosiek Tege de Moro Mambranda Yakazaka Ramada Yadese Deke Rebo Zeketon Diadoro Maplone Muromoso Kotoromo Buna Bramadima Saka Shaka Zamadana Mandia Randa Yanta Rekele de Moseko Mosheka Zeton Naro Mana Mandiandoro Esheber Renke Zebeten de Klenezua Rambamba Kadaba Ramba Saka Tana Narianda Rokeri Reseke Shebere Mondoro Mabana Mamma Mashake Dayan Dolorobo Makam Ramayando Saka Shaka Tayani Levere Mumbaruma Mashak Teke Yandaraba, Manda Brahma Maliando Rosso Coto, Mambrama Shaka Darada, Lake Zeketende Remadiando Rudu, Macam Brahma Shaka Zakendi Adoro, Edaborobo Socoto, Moromoto Secum Brandaya, Maca Shaka de Yanda Rama de Yanda Zacazando Romodo, Maca Naro Yanda Zekeremolo, Re Seca Shevedemo, Reca Sondo Romani Andorobo, Maca Bada Yando Robo Robo Secum Rede Yaka Jadan and Deara. Mada malandiando roco e lo mojeke ne mesieke de medima rumaya kazaraba. Mesieke beremo robo sutan naramandiando ro. Reke beremo sieke zeke tendele. Rima maka mamande ke sieke zeke tendele mo roboto. Maka maramayanda maliba ramada saka shana manamando ro. Reke sieke zeke tendele mo ro. Mamba mbada yando sokto rumana ma ruma ya de yegede besekete Lebe de mo sheke zimna ruma malana ma mala kolono mo romo sokto robo robo Reke sebe de mene mani malando raka dayana mana madima na masika ndo rodea Rana ya kashaka zaka dana mandiri Re mamba na mana ma shakte kedo mone madwa Lande ma broma keno ruma sakte ke sheke do meloro mo ruma soko ruma dobro Makam Ramayanda Zak take a shake take them now Yamada Baleando Robozo. Make him Bruma Manda Yama Shak take and see under Roma Yakazarabaru. Rega shake take a shake as a catende lebo Romo Zocotorbo. Umana Mandianda Roma Shakazak Dalaman Bruma Mandian the Robo Shok to Cosienda Rubayanda Zakata. Nebo Romo Shoko Zianda Remianda Zakedibo. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. We're going to take this prayer point. That in any area of my life that I am exercising my authority as a father and I am doing the wrong. Father, before the end of tonight, please help me to correct myself. Because it is possible for us to do things innocently and we are actually trying to exercise our authority. In Genesis chapter 20, Abimelech was exercising his authority as a king, and he took the wife of Abraham. But God appeared to him and said, but see, you are but a dead man because you took another man's wife. But the Lord said, and he said, it is, will you kill a righteous man? God said, in the innocency of your heart, I know you have done that. That is why I withheld you from sinning against me. We are going to pray, Father, whatever I am doing that I think is right in my sight, but is not right before you, Father, please correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever I am exercising my authority as a father, and I'm actually doing the wrong thing, Father, please help me and correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, please help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me and correct me. Help me and correct me. Help me and correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me and correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me and correct me. Help me and correct me. Help me and correct me. Help me and correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help me. Correct me, help me, correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, correct me in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, my Father. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. 
In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Let's pray this prayer, the prayer this, this way. The Lord said, I withheld you from sinning against me. You will say, Father, Father. withhold me from sinning against you whenever I am exercising my authority as a father in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, please withhold me from sinning against you in any area, in every area that I'm exercising my authority as a father in the name of Jesus Christ. Withhold me from sinning against you. Forbid me from sinning against you. In every area of my life that I'm exercising my authority as a father, in the name of Jesus Christ, in any area, in any way that I'm innocently exercising my authority as a father, please forbid me from sinning against you. Please forbid me from sinning against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, forbid me from sinning against you. Forbid me from sinning against you. Forbid me from sinning against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in any and every area that I am exercising my authority as a father, Father, please forbid me from sinning against you. Oh, forbid me from sinning against you, Father. Let me not fail you as a father. Let me not fail you as a father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. 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 Without wasting much time, let's put our hands together as we welcome our Father and Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you. May be seated, please. Shall we pray? Father, we so thank you for great mercies you bestowed on us. Thank you for the inheritance we have in Christ Jesus. As cold water to a thirsty soul, so is the good news from a far country. We ask God Almighty that today, the good news of Christ Jesus, Lord, will awaken greatness inside of everyone. That Jehovah, there will be a staring, a staring within our hearts. And Father, whatever matters and situations we want to address, Father, you, you bring it to light. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord, every man here will be worthy of the name man in the name of Jesus. That Father, from this very night, you start a walk, a walk of transformation, a change, a great transformation, O oh God, in the homes, Lord, in the wives and the children. Father, let these men go back home, agents of divine revival. Amen. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, we are men. Let our hallelujah sound great. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. The, the topic is interesting, and I'm hoping you have your pen and paper. And let's write... Please, it's important, before I start, I want to uh, uh, say, make some three general statements. Hallelujah. Three general statements and very, very important. We take note of this. One is the fact that God's will is divided into two tranches. Number one tranche is his determined will and number two is his desired will. Let me explain that. There, there is a part of God's will that your opinion or your will does not come to play. There's another aspect of God's will that um, you can stop or you can help not to stand. Not all of God's will stands. Is that okay? Not all of God's will will come to pass. All right? The fact that is God... Um, doesn't mean that he has uh, ownership control of your life. What salvation does is to bring you into relationship with God. Salvation does not give God ownership control of your life. 
Now, control is a different thing. Control is what God has given man from the beginning. It's called a will. Your ability to choose. You want to decide to be great. You want to decide to be lazy. You can decide to marry another person you know you shouldn't be marrying. You can decide to pick a job God doesn't want to go to. Okay? It's so clear. That's, those are desired wills. But let me tell you more about the, the aspect of his will that you cannot do anything about. And those, that's going to form the platform for our discussion tonight. We're talking about understanding um, your spiritual authority as a father. Now, rather, I'll put it in this way, as a man who will graduate to father later. So, three things. Number one is one of those things that the, the, the aspect of God's will that you cannot do anything about. Very quickly, please. Number one is the family you are born into. It is out of your perimeter. You can't negotiate with God before coming to existence. The family you are born into is determined by God. Now, everything about this desired or determined will, the aspect of God's will that you cannot do anything about is fixed, irrespective of human choices, is free of human inter in interaction or interruptions, rather. It is not subject to any form of human manipulation. There's nothing you can do about it. No. So one is the family you are born into. Number two is your purpose. Your purpose in life. You can't choose it. You cannot choose your purpose in life. However, you can choose not to leave it. All right? But the purpose itself was predetermined, and it is exclusive of your own opinion or suggestions, as it were. God did not subject that aspect of your existence to any form of negotiation. Number three is your gender. Your gender. Thank you. Your gender is number three. Thank you. He has educated me. I think it sounds better, isn't it? Can we thank him, please? Let's thank him. He was trying to make us... Uh... So number three is the gender you're born. All right? Forget modern medical lunacy that says you can enter a lab as a man and come out as a woman. Okay? They can alter some regulatable factors within the human being, but they can't change the very, very core of your being. We can alter your physiology, but we can't change who you are inside and that's your mind actually it is more of your mind than your body that makes you a man and not a woman i'll come back to that all right so it's important for us also to know ladies and gentlemen that your 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 gender is is not a choice you made your gender is not a choice you made i give you typical examples of will the wills of god that you can influence and you can, you are actually the main person, not the devil. Please take note of this. You are actually the main person that can stand in the way and frustrate God in these areas. All right? Frustrate God. Number one, the fulfillment of your purpose. Not the devil, please. We're not talking of the devil out there. Just leave him out of this totally. He was not there when God wrote it. He was not there when God planned it. Let me even explain this to you. When the Bible says God... God, when the, dev the devil rebelled, God threw him into darkness, utter darkness. Darkness there does not literally mean a darkness. Uh, ultimately, it means, or first of all, it means the fact that the Satan has entered into a state of unknowingness. Not knowing. He will never be able to comprehend God. Never be able to understand what God is doing. So when you say someone is dark, it simply means the person is not enlightened. The person does not know. Um, second, First Corinthians rather puts it in perspective. Chapter 2, verse 7, he says, from verse 6, he says, How be it we speak at mysteries, mysteries which is all do, or just amidst those that are perfect. He says, The mystery which the princes of this world did not know, verse 7, had they known it, they would not have crucified the king of glory. So what God did was this. Now, because God is all knowing, right from the beginning, all the idiosyncrasies, the foolishness and the naughtiness that Satan has for your life, which is known to him because he's all-knowing, God has factored it into your purpose. 
And that's why for all obedient believers, all things must work together for good. Are you still with me? Yes, all things must work together for good. So don't pay too much attention to that. What you should be concerned about is, let me explain also this. This is a detour altogether. Satan can only influence what man can influence. Satan can only influence what man can influence. Anything man cannot influence is not within his realm to alter. Anything you can't influence. So the issue is this. You are the issue, not the devil. Let me explain this also further. For God to have access to you and fulfill his will, he needs, he needs your permission. For Satan to come and make a mess of your life, he needs your permission. Jesus knocks on the door. Satan knocks on the door. Whoever he opens to, you give access to. It's as simple as that. God does not break on doors. Jesus says, I stand at the door and I do what? I knock. He, he does not have the right to break down the door of your heart. That is out by his own structure. God can't do it. He will not force you to do what you don't want to do. So please, let's get that clear. So those are the examples of desired will. Who you marry, what school you go to, what kind of job you do. Where if, whether or not you allow God's purpose to stand in your life. You know those times when you know you shouldn't be doing this, but you do it anyway? You are working against purpose. And what you are simply doing is, let me explain this so that you don't misconstrue me. The ones, the idiosyncrasies and foolishness that the devil will put in your path, God has factored it into work for you. The, the, the decisions you make to work contrary to God's will uh, has not been factored in. For you to, so don't think, irrespective of what you choose, you will fulfill purpose. That doesn't stand. What it means is this. For the devil, whatever the devil will do and put in your path, God has made provision. Provision, absolute wants. So times when it seems as though you failed because of what the devil did, you are not failing, brother. You are actually failing forward. Times when it seems as though, well, the devil seems to have, you've, you've, you've been set back. Oh, no, 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 no. You have been set back. You are just like a ram. You're taking some step back to gain momentum. That's all that is happening. All must work together for your good. I'll be, I'll be it. The ones you decide to do. Your own choices. When you decide, well, I shouldn't be going this path, but I'm going there anyway. Guess what? Those ones do not work together for your good. For it to work together for your good, you must return to the place where you made the error. Abraham was going, chapter 2 of Genesis. Are we ready tonight? As chapter 2 of Genesis, Abraham was on a journey. While Abraham was on a journey, the Bible says he was heading south. Chapter 12, verse 6, the Bible says, And Abraham came to Canaan, and unto Canaan he came. Now, scripture went, started talking about how he raised altars, chapter 7, chapter 8, raised altars. Finally, the Bible says, and it started journeying southwards. Chapter 13, rather later, the Bible now says, and there was a famine in the land. Abraham now went down to Egypt. Now, going down to Egypt simply means it's a total. Now, this is he taking steps into unknown territories. This wasn't part of God's will for his life. This wasn't part of God's will for his life. So he kept on, went to Egypt. You know what happened in Egypt? Okay? Egypt was where he picked Agar. They tried to um, give away his wife, but he came back to his senses. That's what matters most. Errors we will always make. Errors we will always make. Wrong decisions. Sometimes we are very blatted about it. We know this is what God wants us to do, but we turn the other way. But there's no problem, ladies and gentlemen. There's always room for repentance. The Bible says he repented. And the Bible says he now decided... He was going to leave Egypt. When the Bible says, and Abraham got, went up out of Egypt, chapter 13, verse 1. When he went up out of Egypt, he returned back to the place he was before he went to Egypt, Bethel. So don't think the wrong decisions you've made and they've not repented of, it will work together for your good. It doesn't, ladies and gentlemen. It must, the steps must be traced, repentance must be made. Because you are what deliberately contrary to God's will. But what the devil puts in your way, forget about it. doesn't need your prayers. Don't waste time on it. It is working together for your good. If you are living in obedience, how be it? If you are, if you are not living in obedience, I don't know what to say to you. 
So let's leave that out. We form the foundation that um, man, because it is determined by God, you will have come at another way. <laughs> You're a man because it is determined and there's nothing you can do about it. It is a determined will. You must be a man. Now, please, let me also say this so that we don't fall into the error of gender superiority. There's an error of gender superiority that every culture has imbibed and from the fall of man it's been traded till now. God did not create one sex to be better than the other. That is an error from the pit of hell. You don't understand purpose. The lady who is a lady is a lady because that's God's purpose for her life. The one that is a guy is a guy because that's God's purpose for his life. So you are not better than a she. Please, that is not scriptural absolutely. There is nothing about gender superiority in scriptures. However, when you are in a class and there is more than one student, there must be a class captain. Class captain is not superiority, it is responsibility. Class captain is not superiority, it is what? Responsibility. responsibility. There is a reason why the man came, show, showed up first, the male gender showed up first, and God put him through all things, because it is his own job to make sure that whoever comes after him must be passed down. It's called responsibility. Now, guess what? We did not come first either. No, the Bible says in Genesis 1, I'll be saying a lot of scripture. You can write them down, look them up later because of time. The Bible says in Genesis 1, 26, 27, and God said, let us make man in our image and in our own likeness and let them have dominion over this and over that. And the Bible says in verse 27, and the Lord make man in his own image, in the image of God created he them. The Bible says male and female created he them. If you read Genesis chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, this is the genealogy of Adam. It says, male and female created Adam. In the day God created them. And he called their name Adam. Their name Adam. God never named the woman differently. It was after the fall that Adam decided to call his wife Eve. It wasn't a name given by God. Are we still together? We are going on a small journey. We're talking about you because a lot of men do not understand and it's very frustrating. And guess what? If the devil wants to destroy a, a destiny, especially of a child, he just needs to put, make sure the father is ignorant. That's enough. That is enough. Even if the mother is everything she needs to be, as long as the father is not what he ought to be, that child struggles. And I'll explain myself. So you are not superior. In fact, he was carrying her the day they were created. Everything about he and she was finished the day they were created. The day of the appearing was the one that was different. Sim in similitude of it, you see in Luke chapter 2, verse number 80. The Bible says, talking about John the Baptist, and the child grew and was strong, and God was with him, and he found favor before God and before men. And God, he, God hid him, or he was in the wilderness, until the day of his appearing to Israel. There is a day of appearance. What differs is the day of her appearance to his. He showed up first. Now, he did not exist first. He didn't exist first. They existed together. He didn't exist first. They existed. The Bible says male and female created it in the day. God did not use one day to create the guy, another day to create the woman. That is heresy. In the day he created the male and female, they came together, showed up together, equals. However, like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, once the team is more than one, there must be a coordinator. There must be what? See, I was really never class captain in school for obvious reasons. I should be one of the, those in the list of noisemakers. But I know that class captain was not necessarily the smartest guy in class. Not necessarily. So the fact that you're class captain does not mean you're sharper. A, a lot of us, our wives are smarter. Let's say the truth. Not if it is true, please. 
It doesn't make you less who you are. Everyone has his own role and has his own gifting, which you are not responsible for. Do we understand this, people? Yes, See, we're, we're struggling because we are sit, standing on some platforms that are not scriptural. So we don't know how to celebrate the gift in our life that God has given you to complement what you are to do, but because you feel intimidated about it, you've shut it down. Everything must be centered around you. So here you are, 50%. That is the maximum you can be. How many percent, sir? 50. Fabu says, and two shall become one. That one as a pair becomes 100%. The maximum, I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how gifted you are, how intelligent you are. I do not care where you walk or where you never walk in your life. The maximum you can be in this lifetime is 50. And that's for the best of the best. Most of us are still 12. <laughs> that's for the best of the best of the best. It is, and you see, that journey to get into that great result is iterative. You keep growing as you keep growing. Some of you will understand that as a man, the older you get, the more you appreciate your wife. See, when we are young, there's a lot of foolishness in our hearts. There's a lot of competition. You want to be the loudest. You want to be the one in charge. You are not in charge. No, no, no. You are not in charge. You are the leader. And that's the error. We should not, we should not be in charge. Because the destinies, let me explain why. The destinies we are in charge of do not belong to us. There is no man that died and his wife did not continue to live. So it is, you are not the, you are not everything. Life continues with or without you. There is no wife also, our own is even quick, six months we have remarried. No, because we can't handle it. So, the, the, both your wife, the children, their destinies you are not in charge of. Them. Each one with his own peculiar purpose. You are only playing a role which you are going to give account of. You are only playing a role that you will give account of. So let's get back now. Are we clear on those simple facts and basics? Okay? We've laid a good foundation. All right now. Now, let's get to understanding your spiritual authority as a father. I will take it in three tranches or three sections. Number one is understanding your spiritual authority as a human being. Then we go to understanding your spiritual authority as a man, male gender. Man is male and female. So when we talk about men, we talk about male gender. Okay? Then, because God can call a woman. <laughs> God can call a woman. The anointing is in your spirit, not your body. God's calling is in the spirit, not, not in the body. So all those folks that say a woman can't preach, they need help. We don't carry the anointing in this body. It's in your spirit. If it's in your body, you can control it. But you can't. He controls us. So when you don't enhance your wife, you are shutting down 15% of your destiny. When you don't enhance your spouse, 50% of your destiny is locked down. And there's no anointing oil that will rise it up. No anointing. I'm telling you, there's no anointing oil. Repentance is the first, is the beginning. Apologize to the lady before the days of your ignorance. Begin to help. And for you to be afraid that she'll be out of control simply means you are not a Christian husband in the first place. Control is not leadership. Leadership is not an advantage, it's a responsibility. There is a judgment we will face as men that women will not face. Brethren, haven't you noticed, please, who, who did the devil deceive to do what God says not to do? The woman. Okay, her name is not Eve. It's a woman. Uh -huh. It's the woman. Now, when God showed up, who did he go to meet to give account? <laughs> you will give account. For all our foolishness, you will give account. 
it is in scripture. I didn't write that. <laughs> Let me not go there. Let's stay on focus. I'll be, I'll be hitting from different sides. But brethren, that's the truth, please. Your 50% is locked down. Let it loose. Don't be afraid. See, God should be afraid of all of us. God should be afraid. I'm serious. Can you imagine, in spite of all the sermons we hear every Sunday, we still make mistakes. Myself inclusive. We still, make, we still get it wrong. That one time, that other time, we still get it wrong. But God will not look at you. That's why the Bible says it calls the church his bride. So that it will give the excuse it will give to the female gender. It will always extend it to the church. So Peter said, says, relate with your wives uh, as unto, no, they are not weaker vessels, but it says as unto. It's a figure of speech. If in your mind you consider them, she does not know what she's doing. That's what God is saying. Not that she didn't know what she was doing. God is helping you to have an excuse in your heart so that it will be easy for you to overlook errors. It's not that she didn't know what she was doing. No, she did. But God says, I'm going to advise you. as unto, And that's what Jesus keeps looking at the church. I mean, for a lot of us here, that, I mean, now you're so anointed, God is using you, is helping you. You know your early days as a believer. God should have written you off. He should have written us off. Everything he says not to do, we took delight in doing it. But God will not say because of that, I'm no longer going to be your husband. No, he's still the husband of the church. And it's a dangerous, dangerous analogy. When the Bible says, second, First Corinthians chapter 11, I think verse number 3, it says, so the man is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church and God, the Father, is the head of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you notice that there's no female gender in that serious matter. There's a mano and mano moment with God where we're going to give account. So if probably you've been thinking your manhood... Or you being a man is an advantage, please trash it. It is a huge responsibility that if we know the, have a revelation of it, you would rather be a woman. Because with God, it becomes scary. With men, it's a different thing, but with God, mm, the equation is different. And the Bible, there's no place the Bible says you are the head of the home. The Bible says you are the head of your wife. There's not one place in scripture where the Bible says you are the head of the home. The Bible says you are the head of your wife. Not every woman, your wife. Because the truth is this, she is the head of the home. <laughs> now you are now to coordinate the head of the home. Your job is to coordinate who? She's, have you, see, show me one place in scripture where the Bible says, and a virtuous man takes care of his home. Uh uh. Builds his home. Oh, no, 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 no. The Bible says a man that can't provide for his household. But it is a woman who builds the home. That's another story for women. And that's why you notice that you don't observe things about the children. She does more. In fact, God will speak to you how more about the children than yourself. God will talk to you about every other person, not your own family. That's the truth. Understanding of the roles, ladies and gentlemen, makes a difference. So let me first of all talk about how you can understand your spiritual authority as a human being, first of all. As a human being, first of all. So in other words, this applies to both the male and the female gender. Now, for us, to, if I just go directly and talk about your own spiritual responsibility or authority as a man, 
uh, you won't understand it. So it's better I take us from there. Bible says in 127 of Genesis, says, and God created man in his image. In the image of God created he them, male and female. He created them. Created he, male and female created he them. Verse 28 says, and the Lord says, be fruitful and multiply. He blessed them and he says, be fruitful, multiply. Replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over fish in the sea, bird of the air, everything that creepeth upon the surface of the earth. The responsibility of humanity goes beyond the fact that we are just human beings. That word image in the Greek is the word imagode. Imagode simply means a, repli a replica or a representation. In other words, a representation or resemblance. Representation and resemblance. Now, God did not create any other creation in his image. The only creation that God made, in fact, you go through Genesis, the only being existence that exists on the surface of the earth, celestial or terrestrial, visible realm or invisible realm, is man. Only man is created in the image of God. No angel is created in the image of God. Not one angel. It's not possible. And see, <laughs> being created in the image of God simply means you must be subject to three laws of that image. In other words, for me, not to classify you as being in God's image, it simply means that there are three laws that are binding on you. Number one, for you to be said to be in God's image, you must have the ability to birth. Please, someone say birth. You must have the ability to birth. Angels don't birth. God birthed man. Luke chapter 3, the last verse, which is the son of Seth, which is the son of Adam, which is the son of God. Birth. You must have ability to, to birth. Angels can birth. Matthew 22, verse 30. The Bible says, some Sadducees came to Jesus and said, Jesus, well, a woman married a man. The first husband died. And you know, according to the law, you should take on another husband. So she had taken on seven husbands. During the resurrection, they were trying to make mockery of Jesus because they don't believe in resurrection. During the resurrection, whose wife would she be? And Jesus said, you guys are dumb. He didn't say so literally. He says, well, you, you don't know that in heaven, once you die and leave this body, men are like angels. They don't give birth and they don't marry. If angels can birth, Satan will have reproduced himself a billion times. Fill this earth, but they can't. The number of angels... That had been from the day angels were made at the number of angels we have now. It's only that from one army, they've, they've broken into two classifications. One third are now dark. Two third are still with the Lord Almighty. There will not be more angels. Angels are not created. What I mean, they are not created. They, they cannot reproduce, rather. You cannot birth an angel. An angel can't birth an angel. There is no gender in, in the angelic. So those of us that see female angels, you're, you're seeing a demon. There's nothing like that. You saw a female angel. Or you saw a male angel. There's no, there's no gender when it comes to angels. It is totally unscriptural. All right? You must have ability to birth. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There's a guy who used to be good called Lucifer. His name today is called what? Satan. He can't birth. Birth also means ability to create. To birth also means ability to what? Knows all I need to give man is an apple. There is something in him, my image. He will look, that, that, that image of mine in him will make him look at, like an, at an apple and he will create an apple juice. Ability to create. God knew putting man, when he put man on earth, there was nothing. He knew man will make bridges. Why? They are created in the image of God. 
He knew man who fly. Aeroplane will go in the air. Impossibles will become possible. Man will land in the moon. He knew it. Why? We are in God's image. Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't it a wonderful thing? Satan cannot create. He cannot. Bible says, John 1, 1, verse 2 and 3. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The word was the God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made by him. Without him was nothing made. That was made. Colossians put this in perspective. He says, is the express image of the invisible God. He says, whether they be thrones or powers or principalities, they were created for him and by him. Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. He cannot. That's why he needs man. For Satan to be Satan, he needs to be. <laughs> Without man, there is no Satan. <laughs> Do we understand this, ladies and gentlemen? So I'm going first of all about your spiritual authority as a human being. Ability to birth. God can birth anything. Ladies and gentlemen, it's exciting. I don't know whether it excites your spirit. To know, ladies and gentlemen, light and darkness is the same with God. Same with God. So there's nothing that will go on in darkness that God does not know. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not get, getting there to pay attention. Before they gathered, he knew they were going to gather. And brethren, you can birth. You can birth ideas. Your spirit man is productive. Your mind is productive. Ladies and gentlemen, ideas can flood you. Where do they come from? So, Sometimes from revelation. Sometimes from nowhere. It just drops. Why? It is the nature of the image of God for it to just drop. You are created in God's image, ladies and gentlemen. No angel, not even Michael. When fathers and sons are talking, that's why Jesus, Jesus can't die for angels. Let me explain. Redemption plan that God made, huh? he made to salvage his image, not necessarily for you. Do you understand what I just said? You are the only one created in God's image. So when God was hatching salvation plan, he was trying to salvage his own image. It goes beyond your own life. Hey, why angels will not be redeemed, the one that fell? They were not created in God's image. There's nothing at stake. There's nothing at stake. But you, image, ah, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. So God stepped out. Can you imagine killing himself just to redeem his own image? So, brethren, don't take it lightly. That's why you cannot live a loose life. You are too, you are too, you are too high for that, people. Oh, you are too, you, are, you go beyond that. If you understand, have a revelation of how God values you, you are the only existence. Haven't you read in scripture? The Bible says 24 elders seated around the throne of God. Angels are at a distance. The only other thing that exists within that circle is four living creatures. And they are not angels. There is a governing council that God has. Only men are there, 24 elders. Angels can be consulted on matters. An angel, Angel Gabriel cannot come and visit you in Ojodu. What's your name, my brother? Tundig. And say, Tundig, well, I just saw, I was passing by, just said I'd come and gist with you. Who sent him? He dare not do that. He cannot go and deliver what he has not been given. You are in God's image. You are in God's image, people. Number two. Being in God's image simply also means that you must be sovereign in your domain. You must be what? So what's number one? You must have the ability to birth. Brethren, don't be afraid. Satan can't reproduce himself. He can't. He can influence. I told you, I said, anything man cannot influence, Satan can't influence. You must be sovereign in your domain. 
There is a reason God created. You know, it would have been easier if all created with man was fellowship. Angels can be in heaven because they are not created in God's image. So the necessity for sovereignty in their domain does not fall on them. God cannot create anything in his image and leave it in, his, in heaven. There will be a clash. As he is sovereign <laughs> in his domain because of his image. So he must, once he creates you in his image, he must create a, a territory for you to dominate. Otherwise, you are not in his image. That's why he put us in earth and not take us to heaven. And guess what? Even this whole heaven we're going, we're not going to be there. At the end of time, we're coming back. There'll be a new heaven and a new earth. We cannot, once you're in God's image, you must have, you must have your own territory of domain. So what the fallen man now tries to do is now try to dominate. Dominate is a domin dom demonic word. What God gives us is dominion. Domination is, is when you and to, let me not go there. Are we still together, brother? Come on, give a loud shout of hallelujah if you understand so far. Can you poke your brother and say, brother, you're in God's image. You're in God's image. There should be no reason why your mind will not be sound. Oh, no, no, no. If you like ideas, cry to God tonight, we pray. You must, you must birth. You must birth. You are in God's image. Do you know Satan gets his ideas from men? <laughs> every structure, every structure Satan has and will ever have, he copied from God. There's no other example he has and he has no ability to create. Every structure, ganogram or administrative structure, everything, he copied from God. So there's nowhere he will move if we know scripture that we won't know. <laughs> Why? We know our father's structure. He must be sovereign in his domain. Number two. Number three. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. Now please take note of this. If you've not listened to me at all, listen now. If you are in God's image, it is of necessity that your words must be binding on you. Your words must be we are getting close to Father now. Your words must be what? Binding on you. I don't know about you, but if you read anywhere in scripture where God says a thing and he doesn't do it, let's go and look for another God. Excuse me, please. Can I ask a question, House? When, when God said, the day you eat of it, you die, he's God. He, rules, he doesn't report to anybody. Do you understand what that means? It means he's unquestionable. Psalm 135, verse number 6. The Bible says, God sits in the heavens, and he dwells whatsoever he pleases, on the earth, even underneath the earth. You, don't, you can't question him. 115, verse 6. You cannot question God. Have which, you, have which you not known, have you not heard that God, the creator of heaven and the earth, is not where there's no searching his understanding. He's sovereign, ladies and gentlemen. 43, 11 Isaiah, God says, I, even I am God. Besides me, there's no other. He says later in chapter 40, he says, behold, I'm the Lord. Unto whom shall you liken me? No, no. Which adjective will you use in qualifying God? Job 37, 22. The Bible says, Fear where that cometh from the Lord, and with God the terrible majesty. It says, As touching the Lord, who can search him out? Who? who can? Search God. Ladies and gentlemen, he's just in another. So if God says today, the dead man fell and man ate. If God now says, Well, I was the one that said the day you eat of it, you die. I, God, who reports to who cannot be questioned by anybody. I now said, 
You've eaten of it, you will not die again. Then his image has been corrupted. Once he leaves his mouth, let me put it this way. God is sovereign until he speaks. God is sovereign until the moment he speaks, he loses his sovereignty to his word. Why? Because his word is binding on him. And guess what? He's also his word. And the word was the God and the word was but he puts a structure in place that he himself is subject to his own authority. God was account, bros, being a man, if you have revelation, you'd rather be a sister. He himself is subject to what he has said. Second Corinthians 1, he says in verse 20, he says, for every promise in him is yea, and in him Amen. 34, 30, 34, verse number 14 or so, if I'm correct, or verse 15 of Isaiah. He says, seek here the book of the Lord and read it. None of this word will fail. John 6, 63. Is the spirit that quickens the flesh, profits nothing. The words I see unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Isaiah 40. The Bible says, says, Shout! Oh man, and the man said, what should I shout? He said, shout, all flesh is grass. All flesh is grass. The grass fades. The flower will fade also. But the word of God abides forever. Once God has said it, ma, sir, he cannot move. He cannot move. It is not, it is the nature of his image. He must be subject to his words. That's why Mo, so, brother Solo, King Solomon, brother Solo, brother Solo had this revelation. He wrote in the book of Ecclesiastes. He said, please, I think chapter 5. He says, when you make a vow, please pay it all. Don't come and tell the angels. When I was saying it, I was just joking. Uh-uh. Jesus advised us when he was here, let your yea and your nay, nay, your word are binding. Your words are binding people. If you are created, and this is the greatest asset Satan has. Haven't you noticed, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to the devil to help you, the devil must give you something to say. <laughs> No, 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 please. You understand what I just said now? When you go to anybody here, all those consultants of wickedness, if you go to them to help you, do you know they need you to be able to help you? Do you know how they need you? They must give you something to say. Because, you see, if the devil says it, it is not binding. Because it's not created in God's nature. It doesn't, it's not created in his image. So his words are not binding on him. That's why he can lie and get away with it. <laughs> they are not binding. But once you are in God's nature, so if you wake up in the morning and say, hey man, deep business. Ah, they are always refusing me. They are going to refuse me again. No. Let, me, let me demonstrate it. Come my brother. brother Mike, come, come. Sir, please. Let me loan you. I love when you said understanding. So my job is to help you understand today. So here is, okay. Here is a brother. What's your name, sir? Kunle. Here is my namesake, Bro Kunle. Bro Kunle is a believer who loves Jesus. Here is an angel of God. Huh? And me, I am an angel of darkness. <laughs> okay? Angel of darkness. Every one of us have this company. We can't see it. Every one of us have this company. Psalm 103 verse 20. Put on the screen. Let's all read. Psalm 103 verse 20. 
bless the Lord. Can we, everyone, please, can we read together? I want to read. What, what do they hack into? What do they hack into? Anything that does not conform to God's word, angels of God cannot do. So every one of us have the angel of God, of his presence, always with you. But there is this guy that is always looking around. None of us can walk until you talk. None of us can get to walk until... We don't know your thoughts, so your thought does not work with us. So, this man says, I'm blessed and highly favored. In my own family of darkness, there's nothing called favor or blessing. So, I must step away. Who is the custodian of favor and blessing? So, he gets to work. Get to work. So, he goes ahead of him and makes sure that what he has said now, if, God bless you, move. If he now says, this is a terrible day. This is a terrible day. There is nothing called terrible where he comes from. I am the custodian of terrible. <laughs> so he will, he will have to step back. Now, because he has said something unfamiliar with where he comes from, he must step back. I am the one that can bring his words to pass. Because he is created in God's image, his word must be binding on him. So my own job is to go out every day. There is no anointing that will make you good though. You will have a good day. Was it the devil? No. no. The best the devil can do is get you to speak. You are a useless woman. Who will make sure your wife is useless? Was it the one that, that said she would be useless? You are the one that got him to walk. This stupid boy. Who will make sure the boy is stupid? You understand what I'm saying? Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18. Quick, quick. Move, move, move. Matthew 18 and verse 18. Please, read it to your neighbor. Want to read? Now, hold on, please. Read it to your neighbor again, loudly. But you know the word of God is here and amen. God does not need to say very little to his word again. But anytime you see very little of a shorty, brother, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Take note of it. God's word is sure. This one is sure, sure, sure. What does he say? I say to you, English language. What's the meaning of who is speaking here? Jesus speaking to his disciples. What's the meaning of whatsoever? Sir, does it include the devil, sir? Everything without exception. No, please, I want you to... Does it, does it include the devil? Does it include demons? Does it include your business? Does it include your family? Does it include your destiny? So, if you bind... Now... You notice that whatever you bind on shall be bound. Heaven does not suggest to you what to do. Their own job is to effect what you say. This, since I married you, my life has been wasted. You will never enjoy that woman. In the heat of anger, stupid things are said. Consequence of this thing. Thank you so much, Brooklyn, and Bro Michael. Thank you. God bless you. Please let me appreciate them. Let me take you a bit further on this one because this is where, like I told you, I said, if you go to uh, which doctors, okay, and every other, the, the demon they want to ask to help you needs you to get what they want to do to work. So they will give you something to say. There must be something you must say. Why? They know they are not created in God's image. Their word is not binding. 
And they cannot create. But you are in God's image. So when you say what they... <laughs> When you say what they give you to say, that's why you are not just to say anything. They must give you what to say. So when you say it, it gets them to work on your behalf. But without you saying it, it can't work. Why? Their own word is not binding on them. Their own word cannot create. But you are the one, Ma, sir, you are the one that's making Satan look good. We are the ones making Satan look good though. <laughs> Do you also know that the Satan we are dealing with now is different in nature from the one Jesus dealt with? Oh, we don't know that. It is not the same. It is the same equenso. But ladies and gentlemen, where he was, the realm he was when, when, he, when Jesus was here, he has fallen from that drastically. It's not where he is now. So the one we are dealing with now in terms of texture, it's not close to the Satan Jesus met. It's not close to the one Daniel was dealing with. It's not close to the one that Moses was dealing with. It's not close to the one that we stood Zechariah and the priest. No. The one we are dealing with now is a jelly. Finished. Let me explain myself. The core of the matter. Do you also know that the flip of the coin with God, until you speak, nothing can happen. He says, Mark 11, when you say to the mountain, it is isn't when you think towards the mountain. Your thought is not where the power is. Where is the power? Your words. For thou art ensnared by the thought of your heart, by the word of your mouth. When Satan wanted to finish Moses, all he got Moses to do was to say what he shouldn't say. Psalm 106, 32 and 33. Psalm 106, 32, 33, quickly. Let me not just quote it. The Bible says, And they angered him at the waters of Mary, by the waters of strife. For he became ill with Moses for their sake. He spoke because they provoked his spirit, so that he, he spake unadvisedly with his lips. He said things he shouldn't say. That was the only reason. It wasn't because he did wrong. It was because he said what he shouldn't say. That's why he didn't enter the promised land. So a lot of us, pastor, has prayed. We have fasted. By the time we finish praying and fasting, it's time to obtain. You, you, you send the wrong angel on assignment. Haven't you noticed? The Shunammite woman. You remember the Shunammite woman? That lady that was rich gave Elisha a part of her house, upper room, to stay. The Shunammite woman, when her son died, go and read that passage. There's not one time she mentioned the word death. One time. But all Christians these days, we behave like normal, mere people. Our language is the same as that of people that have no Jesus. And yet, Though we are both human beings, we are not on the same pedestal now. I will explain that very shortly. The woman did not even go and prepare for burial. Father of the baby. Do you know why she... The, word, the baby did not come by consummation with her husband. They be consummating they didn't have. She knew that this baby was born by, by the word of God. At this season... You shall have a baby. She knew it was that word that brought the baby. It was, she'd be sleeping with her husband, no child. She was stricken in age. And she knew if the word of God fails, there's trouble. It can come under attack, does not mean it has failed. It can be tried, does not mean it has failed, ladies and gentlemen. Forever, oh Lord. So she... Her husband, what? Any problem? It is, it is because it is well. She knew one thing. God cannot speak. It was already impossible for her to birth. She knew this noise. This is not a baby of, of the foot of my womb. This is a baby of the word of God. And until another word comes. Please, until God speaks again, don't utter the first one you heard.
Let me show you an example of the power of the things you say. Exodus 17. Exodus 17. Start from verse 14 for me, please. Exodus 17 from verse 14. The Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. Please take note of God's instruction. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will, please help me with the second part of the reading. Can we be louder, please? Now, this simply can be summarized into one word. Annihilation. The Amalek will go extinct. I will utterly put out. That is what God said. Bros, go back. Keep going. Next verse. And Moses built an altar and called the name of the place Jehovah Nisi. Verse 16. For he said. Now, this is now Moses talking to the people. Please, compare this to what God told him. This is what Moses told the people. Want to read? Is that what God said? The trouble that Saul met was created by Moses. The trouble. And how is it? Just communicate. As you, when you're under anointing and God gives you authority. Because you're in his image. God did not say I will fight for them generation to generation. I will utterly. Do you know till today, Master? What God said has not happened. Amalek still exists. They are in Palestine. Amalekites are still existing. <laughs> and as long as there will be generations, they will not die, according to the word of Moses. There must be a representation of Amalek from generation to generation for God to fight with them. You are created in God's image. But then from today as fathers, I dare your mouth to run riot again. Guess what? The devil does not need to attack your children. He knows he has an ally in you. You will help him de destroy the destiny of your children. You have been, we've been helping him. He doesn't have, a can, he doesn't have access to them. Because he doesn't have authority over them. But he knows that you, that God has given authority, that is the head of your wife. And guess what? Anything your wife <laughs> controls to your head. At that level, anything you say stands. Can't imagine after praying. Lord, this, you come out. Our confession is different from our prayers. You have just yourself told God, I withdraw the prayers. Because whatever you bind shall be. But God knows that we'll be foolish and silly. I will have said before maturity comes, we'll have gone ahead to do something. So he gave us a clause. It's a clause of mercy. The B part of that scripture says, whatever you lose on it shall also be you can undo what you have done. It's not all gone. You can undo what you have done. This is the prayer I pray. It's when done, made wrong moves, done wrong things. So I said, Lord, the blood of Jesus is the blood that bought us out of sin. So Lord, I said, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, I buy back all my past errors. I do what? That's what the blood of Jesus does though. He pays for your crime. <laughs> so they will collect the blood and he will collect your freedom. Lord, I buy back all the errors. Things I have said I shouldn't have said. Lord, I buy it back. Satan can't quote it. Once it is bought by the blood, it doesn't exist anymore. It is not covered. It did, it did not happen. <laughs> that's, what, that's, the power, that's the power of the blood. He didn't say it is covered. Mm -mm. It did not 
happened. That's the mystery of the blood. Now as fathers, let me skip the men. I've added the other together. But for the male gender, responsibility calls on us. I'm going to just tell you briefly about the God of Abraham, the God of, and the God of, not the God of Sarah, not the God of Rebecca, not the God of Rachel. When you read scriptures, mind how God is addressed. In case you don't know, sir, you are the one that determines the sex of the child. There's usually nothing called maternity test. It's called paternity test. And do you know that while the child is in the womb, the blood of the mother does not mix with that of the child? And a woman does not carry seed. They only have an incubator to harbor and nurture seed. God put the seed in the male gender. The seed itself is of no value without an incubator. That's why God sees them as one. You see, the male and female gender are two dimensions of God. Let, let me not take you there. God the Father is the custodian of intelligence and decisions. God the Son is the custodian of the word and seed. God the Holy Spirit is the custodian of power and of the womb of God. Of the womb of God. Mm -hmm. huh? I should come again. <laughs> Father, Son, please come, my team. Come, come. Can we put this away? I don't really need it. Understanding your spiritual authority as a man. The difference between some homes and children that will be great, wives that will do well, is the man, not the mother. And I will explain myself. So here is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I am number one, and this number, you are wrong, ma. You are totally wrong. I am number, and his number, and his number is the same person occupying three offices. Okay? There is, is God. I mean, if God can live in you, live in me, even though you are in church, what, how hard will it be for him to just make himself into three persons? So it's one person. And the essence of this, redemption is the necessity for this. Without the fall of man, hear ye, O Israel, the Lord your God is, how many? One God. One God. So it was the Father that came as Jesus and it was Jesus that came as the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the Father and the Father is Jesus and the Jesus is the Holy Spirit. One person. occupying two. I can use you as an example. I'm a preacher. There is PK, the preacher. You cannot understand me or you can't know me the way my wife will know me. And there is PK, the father. My children, you can't, I can't relate with you the way I will relate to my children. And I can't relate to my children the way I relate to my wife. With my children, I'm stern. Because I'm to nurture them. With my, if, if I want to be stern with my wife the way I'm stern with my children, I will not have a home to live in. And, and for some of you, the way we talk to our wives, brethren, it's, I wish the Holy Ghost would just slap you. No, it's, it's a terrible thing. When I was pastoring, I don't spare my men at all. Because you know, if we get it right, let me explain this. I'm coming back to you, sir. There is no place in Scripture that a woman will sin, that God will take the iniquity of the on the children. There's not one place. 
show me a place that will give you a thousand dollars. There's no place in scripture that God will visit the iniquity of the mother on the children and the children's children. Oh no. That's not the order. God does not judge the help mate. <laughs> However, <laughs> do you know when, do you, when Rachel stole the gods of her fathers, eh? God would judge the woman alone. It was only Rachel that died. Rachel was the one that stole the gods of her fathers, right? It was only Rachel that died. Did any of the children die? Oh, no, 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 no. When David went committing adultery, <laughs> the baby they gave birth to died. No fasting and prayer would bring that baby to life. Then, sexual promiscuity started in the family. Brother started liking sister. Same mother, same father. All of David's concubine, his son Absalom slept with them publicly. They did a tent outside. <laughs> the concubines were lining up. He took Viagra. When you go and break your marital vows, if your wife does it, she will pay for her sin herself. Has no bearing on the children. You go and try it. Some of us have two minutes of pleasure. You have given away the destiny of your son. Oh yes. In case you don't know. My brother, they won't join you in clapping. Don't worry. Well done. God bless you. In case you don't know. Go and read your Bible. It is when the men sin, God judges the children. Sometimes the judgment does not come on you. He will spare you. You have brilliant children that will amount to nothing in life. And they will be called by your name. God must shame that name. Anytime people bring cases, say, Pastor, I'm struggling, blah, blah, blah. And they are wonderful believers. I said, was your dad an occultist? What it means to be a man, sir? Ah, some errors they will get away with. We cannot. Oh. I tell you under, under, under the oath of the word of God. There's no problem you didn't know before now. You can buy by the errors with. <laughs> buy back your errors. From now, go and sin no more. All those tiny things which carved on scriptural legs, let them go and find another victim. You, at each minute, you are giving away all the goodness of your children. You are releasing them to the struggle that your father did not subject you to. It's enough for me to find Jesus. But after I've not found Jesus, I have to be breaking some things. It's unnecessary. Abraham. <laughs> Let me not go there. Thank you. Let me not go this route. I will, I, will, I, have to, I will take too much of your time. Our time is up, but we need to pray. As a man, things, God gives you authority as a male gender. Number one. Because you are the carrier of seed, you are the only one that can bless your children. Your wives can pray for them. Only you can bless them. Are the only one because you are the carrier of seed they are a part of you you are the only one that can bless them 
So you see through scriptures, there's a tradition. When the man is about to die, he will call all the children. Huh? Even when he's not dying yet. Haven't you noticed? When Jesus, Jesus could not move on until he received the validation of the Father. Matthew 3, 16. And while he was at Jordan, when he came out of the water, there came a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. Let me put it this way. Let me use project management terminologies. The male gender is the one that can open a project and declare a project open. We are the only ones that can close it out. Operations in between, women can do it. So what you have not started in the family cannot start. Let your wife keep trying to. She, will, she might eventually do it, but it will take a lot of work. It will need you not assuming your role. Then God, because of mercy over the children, can put her there. And if she now becomes the breadwinner, don't blame her. You have abdicated your rights. Because you see, the children we are dealing with are not your age. You are just a, a tank. God brought those destinies to earth. They are not your children, no. You are a caretaker. They are purpose, you have no clue. What God wants for them, you have no clue. Where they are going, you don't know. When you die, their life, you just started. And there are a lot of absentee fathers or mothers. There are people that are orphans. They still succeed in life. So it's your, their destiny is not subject to you, but your decisions can affect how quickly they get there or how slowly they will struggle in life. Form the habit. Get home tonight. Gather your children. Bless them. Look at what God did. Genesis 49. Blessed all the tribes. Moses, Exodus 33, blessed all the tribes. Once you don't, one, any time I finish ministering and I'm under anointing, I call, tell everybody, they know it. Once I call, everybody goes on their knees. Bless my wife, first of all. Start from there because the children will leave. Then I now go to the children, one after the other. And it is in the process of that God begins to give you an inkling. You'll be saying things you didn't plan to say. God begins to give you an inkling to his purpose for their life. Do you know, your, some of your children have never heard from you. Your colleagues will serve you. You have never said it to your children. Some of us are saying, our children, every day. So you are leaving your children to serve our own. Because what has not been declared cannot be implemented by the angel. Don't forget the angel. Brother, if you put your authority as a father into motion, say so your wife will not, your wife will bring offering. My wife brings offering. When it is tight, she needs a breakthrough. She brings offering, go on her knees. I'll collect, I'll make sure I collect it first before she changes her mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, because she's seen it happen. When you operate, you, do, you won't need to let her know she, you are the husband. Some of us are not even in a good place with God to be able to declare our children in the first place. Part of the authority is that you must, 2 Corinthians, and, sorry, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. Quickly. 11 verse 3, 1 Corinthians, please. But I would have you know, Paul writing, that the head of every man is, you notice that in this scripture, there is no woman. The head of every man Do you know why they started with you? Because here you see the equation. Here is, my team, please come, come, come. So here is, 
Here is Christ and here is the Father. So, I am his head. He is my head. So, when I insult and abuse my head, uh, which head am I abusing? His. Is it okay for you to bless her when she annoys you? Because you, you didn't read the Bible. Bible says, love your enemies. Pray for them who despitefully... When your wife despitefully uses you, what should you do? Don't curse her. That's what Satan wants you to do. Once you curse her, which angel gets to work? You now start complaining she's misbehaving. Who is making her misbehave? You, sir. The one she says to you does not stand like that. God understands authority. It takes you to be unfaithful to your covenant for you to stand. It takes you to be unfaithful to the covenant you have with her for you to stand. Once you are faithful to the covenant, it cannot stand. Proverbs 26 verse 2. As a bottle wandering, the quiver to flying, so a curse costless shall not stand. Once there is no basis, there is no platform, it's of no bearing. From today, on a monthly basis. Please, even if it's quarter, you are going to start with start. Get home tonight. Call your children, your family, everybody, kneel down. Let your wife to kneel down. You did not ask to be come, to be made a male. Your 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 manhood is responsibility, and it comes with authority, not authority to subjugate, authority to help flourish. I told my wife, I said, women will look unto you. Oh, yeah. When we nearly got married, I said, go and write it down. Women will look unto you. Till tomorrow, women are looking unto her. Different races all over the globe. Start saying it. You might not be the one that will lead the family devotion. I don't care who leads the family devotion. Don't forget, you're not the head of the home. <laughs> who is the head of the home? You are the head of your wife. So you head everything she heads. <laughs> if you want to be, that's why you try to be the head of the home is causing problems. God did not design you to be that. You know, there are things we read into the Bible that we didn't read from the Bible. That the man is the head of the home. It's on scripture. There's nothing, there's nothing in scripture that says that. It's the man is the head of his wife. And every Proverbs 31 woman says she builds a home. We don't build home. We provide for home. It is our job to build home. So when you see a home not functioning well, huh? Okay, but when you see a marriage not functioning well, you. But when you see a home not functioning well, her, not you, my sister, just her. <laughs> but when you see a marriage not functioning well, thou, King James Version. <laughs> Understanding of roles. Bless your children. Bless. And you know that once it has gone, I cannot return void. Isaac said, go and bring me venison. Let me eat. Jacob heard it. The moment he declared over him, wow, Esau showed up. Ah, he's already blessed. It is irreversible. I shed it. I shed it. Forget it. It is irreversible. But you know what? 
The day you are able to break. <laughs> but I will bless you after I blessed him. I've already made him your Lord. That's what he said. I've already made him. And he, he knows he cannot drop. Isaac did not have the Holy Ghost. Isaac was not a carrier of the Holy Ghost. Number two, project the family. Notice that this is, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. I appreciate you guys. I hope I won't call you again. Project the family. 316, Matthew, please run. My time is gone. Wow. Yes, 316. Come, come, come. Let's jump to verse 17. Please, can we read this together, please, everyone? Let's look at the order of the persons as they were introduced. Who was speaking from heaven? God the Father. God bless you, sir. God the Father was speaking. Don't forget, the Holy Ghost has already descended as a dove in verse 16. This is one place you see the Trinity in action and the distinct personalities they have. It says, Lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved. Now, did the Father talk about himself first or his son first? Did he introduce himself first or introduce his son first? After the son, then he talked about himself. Put the family ahead of you. There's this lunacy going on now that until you buy Versace and Gucci and Louis Vuitton, it doesn't matter what your children wear. You're a disaster. Every sense of apology. You're, 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 you're a collateral disaster. A shame to manhood. So sorry if that sounds nasty, but that's how I feel sincerely. I, I'm not sorry, really, but I have to say I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Why, why would you your children are wearing rags. You are bouncing around looking like you're a star. You're a witch. <laughs> we, in fact, you should not be allowed into the men's fellowship. That's how much a disgrace you are. From today, we change your name to Stella. Move to the women's fellowship. <laughs> you must project them first. The father didn't come saying, I am the father. This is my son. That's not the father. This is my son. It is my son that gives me my identity. You'll be riding awesome cars. Your wife will be going in transportation. Something is wrong with you, sir. I'm telling you the truth. It's all about you, 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 you. That's why God will not bless you the way you want him to. You are not using it according to the other scripture. Go and learn from the Igbo man. An Igbo man, especially if it's an omata, on it's your market. <laughs> Open wake a connection. You see an Igbo man, is wearing his wife. Hey! You, the wife, you won't even know that that's the husband. The husband will look like a servant. We should learn from that. Haven't you noticed that even if a man has 10 girlfriends, he will keep being blessed. He will keep making money. She can do business. You won't give her money. But you will change your car. In Jesus' name, that car will be insured in the blood. You will not have accidents. That is not being a Christian father. It's about your life, you know, your colleagues, what they think of you. 
Children are a heritage of who? You are messing with God's heritage. The person who is their father, who sends their supplies through you, will look for another channel. That's why at the end of the day, if you continue that life, in some few years, if your wife is faithful, she will be the breadwinner of the home. God will channel their supply through her. You have been unfaithful. You should be the last to buy. That's what they call father. We don't just call you father for nothing. What did the heavenly father, for God so love that he did what? When he gave, we were his enemies. Romans 5, 8, in this was manifested the love of God towards us. Why we were yet? Christ died for us. Colossians says, we that were aliens, 121, we that were aliens and enemies through wicked works. As he reconciled back to himself. 121 to 23. People, that's not fatherhood though. I said if you have revelation of father, you'd rather be the wife. The woman. But you have no choice in it. God has given you every grace you need. Your gender came with supply. Your purpose came with supply. If we treat his heritage the way it should be, supply will not be too much of a problem. Bad parties here and there here to grow you, expand your personal capacity with God. But I guess we'll all know. There is no place the father speaks that he introduces himself before the son. No place. Go check your Bible. In the Mount of Configuration, Matthew 17. And suddenly a cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from heaven says, This! That's the first thing. You must project them before yourself. Let me stop there. Are there questions before we pray? There are five, but I'll just give you that to you and let's stop there. Are there questions? I want to take questions. Feel free, please. I really want us to... You will see the transformation that will come in your life. Some of, I'm telling you the truth. No, don't worry. This thing is not prayers. It's scriptures. It's principle. Okay? Bible says um, the law came through Moses, 117 John, but grace and truth. This is the truth part of it. We only rely on grace a lot of times. The truth is the principle. There's something God, there's an order, there's a structure God works with. Yes, sir. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. When we were talking about the death, resurrection, that heaven will be like angels, just like him. That is, we will not marry. Yes. I'd like you to reconcile this that statement with a new head. A new New heart. Okay. You know, you said we're going to come back. So a new heaven and new earth. Yeah. Yes. So when we come back, is... can, can you hold it up here? Once you hold it down there, it's, it, it falters. Up, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. To the end. Yeah. Be any changes with respect to heaven, angels? When we come back to the earth, are we the way we are now? Oh, okay. Do you understand? Sir? I understand. Okay. Now, in the new heaven and new year, there will be no marriage and giving the marriage because we'll be having a glorified body. Huh? There will be, so there will be no marriage. Hallelujah. Okay? It's not a time when we'll be reproducing. The way we were in heaven is the way we'll continue here. So all of us will now take on a glorified body. Okay? Not gender related. But we'll know that this is PK and I will know that this is Kunle and this is Michael. Your wife. You will know, but she will not be a woman. And you will not be a man. Huh? You will be a child of God. <laughs> Gender is necessary for reproduction. We don't reproduce in heaven. 
Yes, sir. Okay, two questions briefly. Number one, I, have, I usually hear you say, I'm where I am by the prayers of my mother. So when you said it's for the father to, to proclaim blessing and, and the for woman the to, to pray. So you have answered your question, sir. By the prayers of my mother, not the blessings of my father. But you usually say, I'm where I am by the prayers of my mother. I said the women pray. pray. The father blesses. blesses. Okay. Yeah. Now, the other thing I want to ask is that you said the Satan we are facing differs from the one that... Jesus for the by a mile, yes. Okay. Can you please you want me to explain more that? On that? Is the one that asks... Should I answer that? Yeah. All right. That's what I don't... You don't... Where is the coordinator, please? Where thou? Is the one that asks the question... Can I answer? Okay. All right, then. Scripture can be stratified into two milestones. There are two major milestones in Scripture. Everything about Scripture can be interpreted, explained, understood in the light of these two milestones. Number one is the fall of man. Now, let me explain myself. Without the fall of man, there will be no need for salvation. Jesus will not need to die. There will be no Bible. There will be no prayers. Do you understand that? Then there will be no Satan. He will just be one of the other things in the garden. <laughs> okay? He will not be an enemy we are fighting. He will just be an agent of temptation to do what God says not to do. But so long we don't do it, he remains what he is. Just another person we rule over. Number two is the death and resurrection of Jesus. Second major milestone. So anything you see in scripture, you need to understand, you need to you first of all analyze. What is the state of that thing before the fall of man? What's the state of that thing after the fall of man? What's the state of that thing after the death and resurrection of Jesus? Are we together? So two milestones, fall of man, death and resurrection of Jesus. So give you a typical example. Let me, let's talk about God, for example. God before the fall of man uh, is the owner of the heavens and the earth, but controller of heaven only. Who was controller of the earth? Man, he gave Psalm 115, verse 16. The heavens, even the heavens belong to our God, but the earth is given to the sons of men. That's told him to have dominion. All right. Now, God, after the fall of man, is owner of the heavens and the earth, controller of heaven. God, after the death and the resurrection of Jesus, is owner of the heavens and the earth and part controller. Controller of heaven, part controller of the earth if some other variables work in accordance to his desire. Number two, let's analyze man. Man before the fall was controller, ruler of the earth but not owner of the earth. Please, ma, can they stop that a little bit? I get distracted if you don't mind, ma. Please, forgive me. I'm so sorry, it distracts me. Now, there's a difference between owner and ruler. You being MD of a company does not make you the owner of the company. Man was ruler. God has never given up ownership of the earth at any time. The earth is the Lord's and Every, the world and everything in it. God has never, ever given up the ownership at any time. Okay? So, before the fall, man was ruler. After the fall, man became subject. Who became ruler? Satan. Now, please understand this. Man lost his position, not his identity. There's a difference. The fact that Satan now took the rights and the rulership of the earth from man, okay, according to what he said in um, um, Luke 4, 6, he said it was handed over to me. Okay, now what happened is simply he took the authority to rule. He did not become man. In other words, 
Satan cannot grow to become God's image. So, man became subject. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, the human race got divided into two species. Allow me to use the word species for a want of a better word. Or rather, two generations. Number one, unbelievers and believers. Unbelievers are the generation of the first, first Adam. Believers are generation of the second Adam. Who is the second Adam? Jesus. Very good. So, for those who are unbelievers, they are still subject on the earth. For those who are believers, they have now been given power to become the sons of God. What is that power? 28 verse number 18, Genesis. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Luke 10, 19. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the... It did, now, it is not, take note of that English. It didn't say all the powers. Check all translation. It's all the power because there are several branches. See, Boko Haram is darkness. Adultery is darkness. Um, accidents, darkness. It can't show forth in anybody. It's just one rulership authority. So for us now, Satan is a subject. But a lot of Christians don't know. Satan is what? A subject. When Jesus was on earth, what was Satan's status? Ruler. You can see that his, his destiny has changed. <laughs> but he keeps trying to present himself as what he used to be. For those who don't know, they will say he has come again. For those of us who know, we resist him steadfastly. He says, hey, I have a right against you. It is written in the word, blah, blah, blah. He says, no, no, no. He has blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that were written against us. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. He's taking them out of the way. The original of that document has been nailed on the cross. What is he showing you? Photocopy. What is he showing you? Where's the original? Uh, it's not submission. It's, you can't. Go and tell people that don't know. And he knows not to come and waste his time with people that know. Yeah. It doesn't mean he doesn't try to come to see how you used to be. But he would rather stay with those ones. That's why they, they will always have perpetual battle to fight. So man before the fall was ruler. Man after the fall was subject. Man after death and resurrection is, can be ruler or subject depending on your salvation. You saved or you're not. Then for the devil, this is where it comes, your answer. Satan before was a subject on the earth. Excuse me. Now, my brother, come again. I need someone that is very huge. Sir, please come. Come, come, come quickly. Thank you. Now, this is my face tower. Come, come, sir. Uh, oh, please sit down. Sir, can you come? Please come, sir. Thank you, Broccoli. Now, please, this is purely an analogy. Okay? I try to be a bit dramatic so that, because pictures seem to drive it home a bit more. This is my face tower. All right? I give it to him. Now, this is purely an analogy. By virtue of our size and how we look, I should be able to beat him up. Purely an analogy. Don't assume, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> if, if I want to take this off him, by virtue of the advantage, strength advantage that I have, do I have to beg him? In fact, you remember those days in school, before I open my eyes, <laughs> that's what I would do here, right? Now, also, don't judge the book by its cover. Don't assume he can take me on, but for the purpose of this analysis, <laughs> <laughs> for the purpose of his, uh, his, his, his Terry's paribus <laughs> what you see is what you get so if I want to take this off this bro will you, will you advise me I go the way I went here or I use wisdom 
Are you what? Wisdom. How did Satan come to man in the garden? This way or this way? Did he force it out of man's hand? What did he go to do? Using wisdom. And suggesting. Who was master at that time? That's why he came with suggestion. Because if, he's, if he was younger, before they made you lord over me, before I open my eyes, if. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. After the fall, he became ruler. With the same authority, there's still a lot to that area. Then after Jesus had messed him up. You know how, do you know the stage Jesus left him? The Bible says, he has disarmed. Yes. Colossians 2, 14, 15, let me finish here. Is there a keyboard that can play for me? Yes. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost, come on. Blood, can we read together please, everyone please, want to read? Verse 15. And having now this word spot. Do you have another version? Where thou control room? Is it still there, right? Control. Do you have another version? Give me now verse verse fifteen, please. Avon, Avon, come on, brethren. Let's talk. Avon, what? Now, please, Mike, come again. <laughs> oh, today. Amen. Now, this is, don't forget, Satan only had all the power, only one. That was authority. So, every oppression he was doing on man was because of this. So, this is the only weapon he has. I give you power to tear upon serpents and scorpions and all the power. Of the enemy. That's not correct English. So the summary of everything he does. Boils down to one thing. He has assumed the position God gave him. So what did Jesus do? He did what? What does he mean to disarm? Now please. What does he have? So when he comes and he's trying to tell you how we're going to... Do you know why he talks a lot now? <laughs> he has become a Yoruba man. <laughs> that wants to fight you. The last person I fought is still in the hospital. By the time I finish, he can't fight. <laughs> that is what Seth Equestria has become. <laughs> by Yoruba, by the time he's, If he can tear through the wall of his words... <laughs> One slap might do the job. The one that came to Jesus to tempt him had weapon. The one we deal with now. <laughs> Guess what? That weapon is not useful in heaven, sir. So Jesus did not take it to heaven. So he said, to you I give unto you. To. The same thing he was using to oppress you. Oh yeah, take, finish him. When he comes, but, when, but if you don't know, you don't know. Or you don't know, you don't know. My people perish not because they don't fast and pray. But they lack So when he comes, say, bro, shut up, man. Go, shut up. Get out of here. I will kill you. I will kill you. If you can kill, why are you announcing? Thank you so much, Tune. I tell folks, I say, brother, let me help you one little bit here. When 
Sir, if the devil comes in a dream and tells you, sir, you are going to win lottery tomorrow, will you come and share testimony? Huh? Will you be happy? No. Why? Huh? Why do you believe when he says he will kill you? Why do you go? Do you know the moment you act on what he has said in fasting and prayer, you have activated what he has said? Let's stand to pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we lift up our hands and just worship Jesus for a minute? Thank him for tonight. Worship him one more minute. Close your eyes and sing hallelujah. 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 Oh, oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Let the Holy Ghost help you. There's a lot you have heard. There is a lot, there are lots of errors behind. But let the Holy Ghost tell you through. Come on, pray aloud in the Holy Ghost. Every waste places will become a fruitful field. Your wilderness is about to burst out with water. Come on. The mercy of the Lord is about to flow into your heart. Into your life. Hallelujah. 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 
la barrie et l'ore par le passe par le pote qui est la relabore à mine ya la sauce et à come on pray in the holy ghost come on man pray in the holy ghost there are lots in the past that only the holy ghost can help you deal with God, from beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. Shake it up, Pass so pretty. Hallelujah, say, Hallelujah. Parame coete. Tell a man of letter. Clarele mora sala besa. Hayelo hombre que yo le capo le piata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Jesus name we we'll pray. I need to pray this in your understanding. Lord, every error, every error that I've made before today, error in pronouncements, error in speech, error in, in deed, I buy back with the blood of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and pray. Declare it. I buy back that's what the blood is for. It pays for what you are supposed to pay for. I buy it back. By the blood of the Lamb. Locational errors. Decision errors. Pronouncement errors. I buy it back. Everything I have said over my wife, over my children, that is not in line. Everywhere I have helped the devil visit my home. I buy it back. I buy it back. I buy back by the blood of the Lamb. I buy back wrong statements. I buy back wrong thoughts. I buy back wrong actions. I buy back. Come on, buy back. Buy it back. Shela Bakoreta. Kapare pare pasote, real amonde biatande. We buy back. We buy back. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Secondly, we are going to pray. Bible says, "Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven," and says. Give the cloths of mercy. And whatever you lose on earth, be losing in heaven. Brethren, please, don't, don't mess with this. This is about your life and your family and the destiny of your children. If you know, you can remember, you know what the Bible says? It says when you go into your closet to pray and you lock the door, and you remember. Now, remember means it was not something you bore in mind. But at the point of praying, contact with the Holy Ghost, he brought it to your remembrance. There are some things as you're about to pray, the Holy Ghost will bring it to your remembrance. Huh? Those ones that you have bound yourself, losing them. No man of God, this is not given to anybody because it was not pronounced over you. It is something you said yourself. So you are the one that will loosen it again. Some of us have bound our wives. Keep calling her useless woman. You bound your marriage. The things you know, especially the ones that have been reiterated. I reverse it. Let the same mouth that curse bless. Some, sometimes might not, there might not be a need to just go and say, oh, I reverse what I said. No, 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 no. Do you know how to reverse curses? Bless. Reverse wrong statements? Bless. So the woman you said, 
you useless woman. So my wife is favored. She's blessed. She stands as a rare diamond in the midst of women. Women call her blessed. They celebrate her in the marketplace. Just bless. Bless your children also. Because get the right angel to walk. Lift up your voices and begin to declare. I can't do that for you. No man of God can do that for you people. Yeah, it's just you. And what you did, you are undoing it. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we declare. Finally, please, before I pray, I just saw in a flash now, several doors and some of us were standing before one door each. Not all of us, some. And I noticed that while some people shut the door and turned their back, walked away. Some people just left the door open, but they walked away. So I was asking the Lord what, what this was about, and he says to me, there's some wrong places that you are. Let me not say it. Let me not be explicit about it. If you're in a wrong relationship, you're in a wrong association, don't just walk away. Close the door. Because some have decided tonight, some doors are shutting. You know it's not a door God, God is delighted in. It's shutting. Alright? And while I saw a few shut the door, then walked away, some just turned their back. The door is still open. It will come back to haunt you. You are the one that opened it, you must close it yourself. Please, I'm going to say this, and please... Um, don't try and find out if it's true. I say this humbly under the grace of God. I want to pray for each one of you, for our businesses, for what you do, where you are. God is going to shoot you up. Yes. But that's not the issue. Don't allow me to touch you if you know you are going to continue deliberately, especially in sexual sin. I don't care whether it is another woman or you masturbate or anything. Don't, don't allow me to touch you. It, it should not, it's better for you to be where you are now than for me to touch you and pray for you on this. I'm not, don't, I don't want you to discover what I'm saying is true. I'm just telling you. The, by now you should know the other grace you carry. That's the way it works with me. Don't, please. If you know you're not going to, you've made up your mind yet, not to indulge in that. Please don't allow me to touch you. But please, if there's any door, it might not necessarily be a door of unholy relationship. But you know God is just in this. There's a man here. You still go to a place. Oh. God just told me your name. I know your first name. I know your last name. You've been coming to a church. You still go to a place. After all this, and we all look at you and we think you are great in God. What is the matter with you, sir? Why? Why? How can devil fix what God can't help you with? Stop living that double life. It doesn't, sir. It doesn't pay. I've seen it over and over. Do it for it. If you are not God can help you. Walk away from God. God hates it. He says, I would rather that you are neither cold nor hot. I'm not judging you. 
God just showed me. I, I, know how, I know your first name and your last name. But it's not given to me to say. But please, sir, don't. It will only bring you more shame. For you to know you are the one I'm talking about. Two Thursdays ago, you were still there. Thursday. You got there after three. Two Thursdays ago. Please. I need us to look inwards, people. God really wants to just tell us lose as men. Tell me what God will gain by you not prospering. Tell me one thing God will gain by you not doing well. Not being able to provide for your home. Tell me one thing that God will gain in that you, his child, cannot provide for your home. Tell me what he will gain. Please, any door you know you have opened, that is not opened by God. The first key to this is just desire. Lord, this is not going to happen anymore. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want it anymore. And I'm saying to you today, by, your, by the help of your spirit, that Lord, this door is shut in my heart. Help me to physically shut it. Please talk to God in a moment. I'll just give you 60 seconds for that. Before I pray. In my life, oh Lord, I see what you're doing. One more time, oh God, I lift my hands in praise of your name. Lord, I lift my hands in praise of your name. In my heart, in my life, Lord. I see what you're doing just one more time. Oh Lord, I lift my hands in praise of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please, every eye shut, please. Every eye shut. You know you lost relationship with God and you just want it back. You're just hanging in there. Your joy of salvation is gone. It's been a while, it's gone. You're just going through the motions, but you want the real thing back. I want to pray for you before I pray for everyone. Just every eye shut, please. Just lift up your right hand where you are. And I'll pray with you very quickly. That God will restore the joy of your salvation to you. And that what had been lost in your relationship with God, the Holy Spirit. But we need you to own up to that first of all. That's, I've helped. Every eye shut, please. Just raise your right hand where you are. And I will pray with you very, very quickly. Eternal Father, these are just the hands to you. Father, you said you restore the joy of their salvation. So Lord, do as you have said. Fill these ones with fresh unction and grace. Let the inner fountain begin to bubble over again. Let life come through them. Anoint them, Lord. I need you to use these ones. Father, anoint them so heavily. Let people who see them after a while say, what have you become? And begin to say, the Lord that did your own will do my own. In Jesus' name I pray. You may put down your hands, please. Now, I'm just going to pray for everyone. Maybe I just, um, 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 I'll, I'll say a general prayer. And I don't know why it's coming to my heart to just shake us. But please, if you've not made up your mind, do allow me to shake you, okay? Father, thank you. <laughs> no man take this honor unto himself except it's given to him by you. Thank you for the honor to be men. Not just men, men of valor. Men, God Almighty, that wives can look up to, children can look up to, that the house of God, the household of Christ, that this parish can, can count on. 
We thank you, God Almighty, for giving us life. Thank you, God Almighty, for taking care of the things we are supposed to take care of. Father, I declare over the abilities to begin to manifest in the realm of their manhood. Give unto them in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, the Lord, what was not enough for them before that they need, let it be more than enough. What they did not have at all, Father, release it to their hands in the name of Jesus. The anointing, the power, the unction, the hunger to pursue after God that you need to be the pastor of your family. Receive in the name of Jesus. Whatever have hindered you before today, whatever has stood in your way and taking advantage of ignorance, taking advantage of weakness, Father Lord, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, strangers will hear my voice, submit themselves to me. They will fade away, I'll be afraid out of their close places. I declare, Lord, every such stranger in the ways of the kids and your children, I command them accursed. I command them accursed. I command them to move in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of Christ reign in your hearts. Your hands become anointed from today. Your mind is anointed. The idea that will make you stand out in your field, the Lord releases to you tonight. Any one of you that is in a whatever, wherever area you are locked down, speak over your country. Bible says, and they shall eat of the fatness of your house and drink from the rivers of your pleasure. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. You stand on grace. Your feet will not buckle under you. From now on, your steps cannot be restricted anymore. Your progress cannot be hindered. You saw under an uncommon grace. Every area of life that it seems as though you have lagged behind. The anointing for uncommon speed rests upon you right now. The Lord will give laughter, long life in your mouth. Dancing will tarry in your feet. Every year till the Lord Jesus comes. Until the number of appointed days are fulfilled. Whenever you take the head count in your family, none will be missing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, we'll just close the meeting now. Then just come around. I know there's a sister that wants to see the pastor. You can come around too. Please, don't shake for too long. Please. Just hold up. Don't shake for too long because of our time. And I want to know, before we share the grace, please, if you have not written your name, the attendance, write your name. Next month, Pastor Bola will be with us. April, in the month of April, we have the Lagos State Fire Service coming around to train us. And we have first aiders coming to train us on CPR and first aid for our families. The year is loaded by the grace of God. Let's share the grace together. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, this message shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please, we want it coordinated. Coordinated. We just follow this line. Please, we just follow. We follow this.